All right, so just before we start today's video, I have one question to ask you guys, and that is how many decks have you guys put together and tried out in the normal and rare rarity festival? For me personally, I'm literally trying everything out. I'm having so much fun with it. So for me, I've lost count, but how many has it been for you guys? What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we are getting back into the normal and rare rarity festival and I've been having so much fun with this deck and that is Yosenju. Now you guys can see here this is an ultimate consistency build. There's so many different ways to get to as many cards as possible. Of course there's a lot of great cards that you play in Yosenju like Tanky, Pot of Extravagance and whatnot. We don't have access to that in this event but we do have Jar of Greed here. We also have Card Card D which is a very very cool card. It's a cool tech that I tried to put together and I think you guys are gonna like this one so I'm not gonna go through a full deck list but you guys can see the full build right over here now if you guys do enjoy make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel content all right I'm super excited to get into this again Yosenju is one of my favorite decks of all time and the fact that we can play this and especially abuse some of the best cards in this format is really really fun so without further ado Let's get into some duels. Now, let me just say it's a really good thing that we won the coin flip here because you do want to go first with this deck always. However, at the end of the day, you are playing Yosenju. So it's actually not too bad going second either. And that's why I really enjoy playing this deck. But again, you want to go first. You're playing so many trap cards. If you open, I was just about to say one to two Yosenjus and traps, you are in a such a good spot. Here, we didn't see the card card D, but that's fine. We have the Jar of Greed and Jar of Greed is going to keep our consistency going. Another reason why I really like Jar of Greed is because it's a chainable trap. What I mean by that is a lot of people are playing MST in this format. If they MST target my Jar of Greed, I can chain it and I won't have to worry about losing the card for nothing. Whereas something like Sakuretsu Armor, something like Compulsory Evacuation Device, if he just goes and MSTs it now, I can't do anything with it, right? So that's why I really like Jar of Greed in this deck and it keeps the deck really, really consistent. Honestly, we'll find out what we're playing against here. I think it's just going to be a set, a T set. Okay. Anything else? No, it seems. Okay, we're fine. We have a Kama 1 as well as a Sujik, which is really powerful. So... I think we're in a pretty good spot here. The only thing we really lose to is like Torrential. Now on his end phase, I'm probably just going to go Jar of Greed, get the free draw over here as fast as possible. The Draining Shield's a really nice battle trap that you guys can play. Again, look, we're always going to have resources. The Yosendru is coming back to your hand at the end of each turn means that you're always going to have resources. So here we're going to summon the Kama 1 and uh, we're just going to straight up go. Okay, it doesn't look like he has anything to uh, chain here. So we're just going to go here. We're going to activate our Stujic, boost our Kama 1's attack. Here the thing is, Kama 1 has this really neat effect where you can bounce a card, but it has to be face up. So because of that, we actually can't bounce a card here. But 2600 should be enough to get over anything that he put in defense position here. Beautiful. We go Stujic for 1000 directly to the face. We have two cards that we're going to set. This is so beautiful because our opponent's not going to be able to play through this. And our end phase... These are going to come right back to our hand, so we're not going to worry about losing them to like, you know, either him destroying them by battle, by card effect, whatever, whatever. They're going to be in our hand at all points. He has to play through a Floodgate Trap Hole, a Sakuretsu Armor, a Compulse, as well as a Draining Shield. This is insane. I don't see my opponent playing out of this one, to be honest with you. We're going to do a lot of poke damage here. If we draw a third Yosenju monster at this point, we just, I think, automatically win really at that point. So here we're in a really good spot. I'm not really sure how far he can go. The two set cards didn't seem like they were going to do anything when I was summoning my commas. So I think we're good, honestly. I don't think we have to worry about anything here. All right, so here is kind of where I sit down and I think, okay, do I just stop this summon? But I'm probably not going to do that because he probably does have another Lunar Light monster. He had to use his Monster Reborn for this. So I think if he does have a second Lunar Light monster, it doesn't matter really what he goes into because we have the Floodgate for any of the fusion monsters he summons. Because I know those fusion monsters can help both decay really, really easily. So we have the Floodgate for that. Sakuretsu also for that. Compulse also for that. Oh my goodness, we're in such a good spot here. And I think, I believe he used the Graveyard Effect to add a card from his deck. That's fine. So we will have a second Lunar Light here, which is kind of cool. I think he can go uh, Black Sheep. Is it Black Sheep or Butterfly? Butterfly, there you go. Uh, I'll let everything go through at this point. I don't want to stop anything right now. I don't think there's anything worth stopping. Again, like we have all the cards to stop anything he needs to do. If I stop him now, there's a chance that he can continue going. But if I stop him when he summons his big boss monster, he's kind of stuck at that point. So here I think it's okay. He's going to add a poly. This is what I expected. He's going to add the poly. He's going to make a fusion monster. As soon as he makes that fusion monster, that's when we flip one of our trap cards, stop him from playing, and I think we'll be in a good spot here. So let's just honestly let him go through his turn. There's nothing really that I can do at the moment. Okay, so this is going to be fine. I'm going to let him go poly. 
And we're going to see what he summons first. I think there's one that can let you attack multiple times. I can't remember which one, what the names are now for Luna Lights. But I do remember, like, vaguely what their effects do. So, Cat Dancer. So, let's have a quick read here. Cannot be destroyed by battle. That's fine. It's not something we're going to be destroying by battle anyways. We have a bunch of trap cards for it. So, that's not a big problem. I think here, funny enough, if we just compulse this, he's going to be in a really sticky situation. He's going to get to add a spell off of the yellow. But I think if we just get rid of the fusion monster itself, he doesn't really have any more plays afterwards. Now, does he have something to protect the fusion? Let's find out. All right, so everything resolves, which is kind of nice here. Compulse is going to bounce that back. He's going to add a spell. I think the, the perfume or whatever is a once per turn. Yeah, light perfume is a once per turn. So I don't have to worry about him using that again. Uh, he gets a trap here, actually. What does a trap do? I don't remember what any of these cards do, actually, funny enough. All right, so if it's a, mo if it's a monster that's destroyed by battle, he can add cards to his hand. That's not a big issue because he has no monsters right now. I believe that's the card he just set to. And so here, we can go card card D. Or we could just push for some poke damage. And I think we're going to push for some poke damage. We'll hold the card card D for now. Because I don't think I want to keep giving him as many turns as possible. So here we're just going to go this. Oh, okay. Okay, so he's going to negate this. Give it 400 attack. That's fine. It's going to stay on the field, actually, funny enough. Because it's negated now. So we're going to have to protect this as much as we possibly can. We still get to do a nice 2k to his life points. Perfectly fine. We just play it slow. We have protection for it. So I think this card should be safe in itself. So we'll just pass our turn here. Unfortunately, it doesn't come back to our hand. It's going to be negated. Chalice is actually a really good card in this format. The normal rare format, Chalice is a pretty good card, especially against a deck like Yosenju. But uh, yeah, I don't see him going further from here, to be honest with you. There's not much I think I see him doing. Unless he draws into... Okay, I was going to say, unless he draws into another perfume or something like that. Not a big issue. We know this is a trap card now because the last one was a Chalice. So we know this is a trap card. And we know this gets destroyed by battle. He gets to use the trap card so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to not destroy it by battle now is there another way to get it off the field without destroying it by battle so i think what we can do is just card card d draw two and i'd rather just get the 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 advantage here at this point because he's he wants me to attack it by battle right now if he decides to normal summon i do have the torrential tribute to destroy everything which also means the trap card should not trigger Okay, so he really wants me to destroy this by battle now. This is a nice little back and forth we're going through. So you know what I'm going to do? We're just going to go all in. We're going to let him search. I don't care. We have too many trap cards to lose anyways. I do not mind if he gets to search and he gets some advantage. Because I think we have enough defensive cards where it won't matter anyways. So we're just going to boost up our comma one. And we're just going to go straight into our battle phase over here. So let's attack with the 2600 just because, yep, I knew that was a good play. Because you never know what these cards have especially for the defense so this is fine i'll let that go through that's not a big issue for us the thing is really it doesn't matter what he adds the blue cat's pretty good i would say but it doesn't really matter what he adds here because we do some pretty big damage i'm gonna set this sakuretsu armor i'm gonna keep the floodgate in hand and we're just gonna go into our end phase these two are gonna come back to our hand so our resources are fine he has a blue cat really that's all he has and we have a ton of chat if he can play through five back row kudos but i don't see a way he's gonna play through five back row here all right so he gets to a fusion because they'll get the poly, and I know he has the traps or his monsters in his hand. So I think we're actually in a decent spot here. Because it doesn't matter, again, what he goes into, because we have too much back row for him. So he goes into Cat Dancer again here, funny enough. Which, I could Torrential our entire board, or I could just Floodgate it, and I think that might even just be the better play here. Because then it's stuck in defense position and can't really do anything with it. And then on our next turn, we do the exact same thing. We summon a Kama, we summon the Sujik, we attack over it, and then we have 2600 damage here. Unless these back row are something important, I think we're in a good spot here. I mean, I think we just go for game here, really. We just go Kama 1, and we are going to summon the Sujik. We go Sujik effect, targeting the Kama. Oh, wait a second. This can't be destroyed by battle, can it? Is that how it was worded? I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think it can be destroyed by battle. All right, that's fine. You know what? That's okay, because now that it's face up, actually, I can use the effect of comma one to bounce it back. So that's even better, because now I think we're just in the best spot we can be. Because now he has no cards in hand. He's playing with two back row that really I don't think do anything. So we're just going to set the floodgate again and go into our end phase. I think we got it from here. I don't think I don't see a way for him to win. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this was actually a really good matchup because Lunar Lights is actually a pretty good deck, but I really wanted to show you guys how this deck can set up, and even the most minimal of setup can just sometimes win. We'll use the comma effect. I don't think there's a torrential or anything here, so I'm not worried about that. I think more what I'm worried about is battle traps, but at the moment, I'm just going to summon all the monsters I can because I think the only battle trap he can play is Sakuretsu and obviously he can't Sakuretsu all of this so I think we're fine here we're just gonna boost up our comma 2 and we're just going to battle here we'll attack for 16 first yeah 
28. This should be game. Beautiful. So this is what I mean. This is a perfect example of how the deck plays where you really can control the game state. Your opponent can have plays, can have combos, but as soon as you can control the game state, you're in a perfectly good position here. So that's really how the deck plays and that's really what the most enjoyable part of the deck is. No matter how many turns you go back and forth, you're always going to out-resource your opponent. So here's a quick look at the deck again for anyone who wants to see. We're playing triple card card D, triple comma one, triple comma two, triple comma three, double Sujik. I'm just showing you guys the name so if you guys want to build this for yourselves you guys can see the names you're playing one good darla one jizukiru these are really good as well because i mean playing kaijus is never a bad thing especially in a deck like this where you can summon a kaiju to your opponent's side of the field and then combo one bounce it right back to your hand it's really good triple mst double ring of destruction triple torrential tribute double jar of greed triple bottomless triple sakuretsu triple compulse double draining shield as well as triple floodgate now the extra deck you guys can take a look i'll just press them one by one so you guys can see the names but really, they're not that important. You guys saw that we didn't really go into it. And there's not a lot of situations where you really want to go into it. But sometimes it comes up. So I just wanted to show you guys the extra deck right here. But again, you guys got to see the power of Card Card D, which gets us two free draws. You guys get to see the power of the Yosenjus, which is always going to be resources. This deck is super, super fun. And so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys really did enjoy. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. You guys can get to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel content. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one. You and with that, Spanko, sign it out. Peace.